Good afternoon, Lace Chap and I've John says, but here, true and welcome to Crusader Kings 3 because today we are kicking off our first full series and oh my goodness, I've been, I've been looking forward to this. So at this point, I've put about 50 to 60 hours into Crusader Kings 3. That's absolutely nothing, so that means it is time for a brand new adventure, for us to learn this game together, for brand new episodes of Let's Talk All About The Things That John Got Wrong, and most importantly of all, as you may have guessed from who's on screen, my first ever Viking campaign. So naturally, when I decided I wanted to do a Viking playthrough, my first thought was the 867 start date. Then I realised that might be... Uh, a little bit too on the easy side. You've got this massive great territory full of Norse culture, Norse religion, you've got a hugely divided Britain right over here. Easy pickings, all things considered. History literally says the Vikings are gonna get out there, do well, smash the hell out of Britain, build a new home in England, and indeed within a century build the massive North Sea Empire. So it kind of felt like history was a bit too much on my side in this start date. So that got me to thinking about the 1066 start date, because 1066 is a really interesting year when you're talking about Vikings, because when modern historians try and put, you know, dates on when the Viking Age was, 1066 is the end date. It's the end of the line for Viking expansion. After a century of passing between Anglo-Saxon and Scandinavian hands, Harald Hardrada fails to capture the Kingdom of England and no Scandinavian will ever attempt to get hold of it again. Scotland, meanwhile, will slowly kick Norway out of its surrounding islands, pretty much establishing the boundaries that they would then maintain for the next millennium or so. And it wasn't just military defeats, Norse culture and religion were also waning as Catholicism spread aggressively into Scandinavia. You see, the fascinating thing is, the Christianization of Scandinavia happened remarkably quickly. In a period of less than a century, this whole area went from being part of the Norse religion to being very much Christian. Though, naturally, it's very hard to tell exactly how long certain areas took to convert. Primary sources are very limited, there might have been some rural regions that stayed Norse for a lot flipping longer. And part of that might well have been a consequence of the Viking Age itself. By virtue of going out and settling all over the place, large numbers of Scandinavian people and leaders were exposed to Christianity. And we know from, say, archaeological records in Norway that there was already significant belief in Christianity, especially around the coasts, long before the king made the decision to make the country officially Christian. And through a combination of that prior exposure to Christianity and the presence of strong kings who were able to enforce their will pretty effectively, the kingdoms of Denmark and Norway were able to Christianise, maybe not entirely smoothly, but about as smoothly as you could possibly hope for a massive conversion from one religion to another at a country-wide level. And so we come to the country where I would like to turn my attention for this playthrough, where, appropriately enough, Crusader Kings itself was produced. Paradox, of course, based in Sweden. But uh, Sweden was a bit different from Denmark and Norway, which is its path to Christianization was a lot less smooth. In the mid to late 10th century, Eric the Victorious briefly flirted with Christianity, though he kind of seemed to revert back to the Norse ways, and it's very unclear whether he ever actually meant it or whether it was just politically convenient for him to accept baptism. His successor in the late 10th century, however, King Olaf, decided he was going to make this Christian thing work. Unfortunately, King Olaf was not a particularly strong or secure king. So as a result of that, several of his vassals just said, no, actually, we're not doing that. We're keeping the old ways. And that's precisely why in Crusader Kings 3 and the 1066 start date, there are a couple of tiny holdouts of the old Norse religion located in Sweden. And these guys, these are very literally the last Vikings. You see, this here, if we zoom in once again, is why I find Northeast Sweden absolutely fascinating in the 1066 start, because uh, these are Vikings at the end of the Viking Age, pagans during a time of rapid Catholic expansion. They're just clinging on for dear life in a world that is rapidly moving on around them. I find them just absolutely fascinating. And uh, perhaps no single territory represents that position of being caught between two worlds better than the county I've chosen to play as uh, down here, the county of Owlands. 
You see, Modern Ireland also has a fascinating history of being caught between two worlds, in terms of culture and language. The island is overwhelmingly Swedish, religiously overwhelmingly Finnish, and geographically halfway between the two. After the conflicts of the early 20th century, they made it abundantly clear that what they wanted to do was join Sweden. However, due to some political chicanery at the League of Nations, they were instead made an autonomous region of Finland, where they remain to this day, despite continuing until the present to basically speak nothing but Swedish. They were also given various exemptions and freedom as a result of being an autonomous region. So, for example, they've got their own seat on the Nordic Council, separate from Finland. They were also allowed to have their own flag, which they immediately responded to, and this is a level of pettiness I greatly approve of, by making their flag as close to Sweden's as they could possibly get away with. And so too does the county of Auland sit at the crossroads of history in Crusader Kings 3, with a straight linking it to both Sweden and to Finland. Yes, indeed, it is literally the bridge that joins the rapidly Christianizing West Scandinavia with the Finnish and Sami culture that would prove a lot more resistant to it. Can we preserve the Viking Age? Will we have no choice but to bow and accept Christianity? And most importantly of all, can I find a dog? Because now you get to pet your dog by decision and I've never wanted to do anything more than this. So let's flipping go. So, who is our great hero? Who is our first leader who is going to ensure the survival of the mighty Viking way of life? Well, I never said this was going to be easy. Say hello to, um, yes, the wonderfully named Count Olaf of Auland. And uh, he's not exactly, shall we say, Viking material. I mean, I assume his parents did their best trying to turn him into a good Viking. He's got himself a good, and when I say good, I mean like, you know, sort of okay, martial education. All right, he is very good at fording water, which is good, because if he needs to march his army literally anywhere, he's got to ford water one way or the other. So that's probably quite useful, but um, unfortunately, he's not, he's not really got that killer spirit, if we're going to be honest. Instead, no, he's picked up some much more um, sociable, pleasant, diplomacy-style personality traits. He is, in fact, incredibly trusting, nice and calm, and patient. So he is in no rush to save the Viking Age whatsoever, which is a shame because it's already 1066 and things are a bit on the uh, the late side. So yes, he's um he's dressed up correctly. I'm not sure. You know what? I'm not sure you actually deserve the hat right now. Yes, you don't actually get the helmet until you've earned it, because, uh, yeah, he's Viking and whatnot, so, therefore, by default, he gets a helmet, but I feel like he shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't really get that at all, so we're gonna take that off him. Oh, that's much better, you've got lovely hair, show it off. There you go, much better, because, yeah, these days you can play dress-up with your counts as much as you want to, which is spectacular. So, yes, you can have your armour and your helmet back when you've proved you actually deserve them, so... Okay, we got someone who is pretty good at the old diplomacy, all things considered, all right? People naturally like him. He just seems like, you know, he is a nice, trusting, calm guy. Pretty chill, nice to hang out with. He is still, however, a competent enough military leader. So he's got a bit of a boost to his levies. He can get a decent number of troops out. He's going to do okay if he needs to march to war. However, the rest of the stats are just... Sort of fine at best. Stewardship is reasonable, in fact, yeah, more than we need in terms of uh, domain holdings for the time being. He's actually got uh, domain cap of four right now. We don't need four. Because, yes, I do like starting off with the most difficult start I can possibly find. And uh, he's in not a great position. He's got himself one county. That's your flipping lot. Intrigue, not going to be his thing. So, as a result of that, we're really going to be leaning on our spy master because he himself can't even defend himself from hostile foreign plots. Learning is okay. So, we've got a bit of piety coming in off that. So, that's reasonable. That's reasonable right there. So, I am the Count of Auland right here. As a result of that, I'm not reporting in to the King of Sweden. Instead, I'm reporting in to Duke Eric III, the heathen, of Sweden. So uh, he is the Duke of Upland, I assume, right over there. Yes, the Duchy of Upland 
absolutely spectacular. So me and him should get on fine. I really hope we do, because, like, you know, if we don't get on fine, we haven't got many friends elsewhere. And he naturally reports into the King of Sweden, who's got a lot of troops. That's, that's quite a large number of troops. So... There's nothing we can do about him for the time being. He's 20 years old, he's got plenty of troops, he can do what he wants. So, in fact, that's a good beard for a 20-year-old. Well done. And yeah, being part of Sweden is actually going to be useful for the time being. Because, uh, yeah, right now, I'm not reporting into the king. So he can't take action against me directly. Because the duke is between me and him. Though, admittedly, they do sort of hate each other. So, uh, yeah... We'll have to see how long this lasts, because uh, it feels inevitable that sooner or later, one of these guys is going to uh, not be willing to accept the other. And if we just go over to the religion map here, yeah, there isn't much in the way of help. There's one county down over here, so the Count of Varend over in this direction. He is also of the Norse religion, as is, I believe, all the little, uh, yeah, the Counts along here. Because you've got a bunch of Counts reporting into you. Yeah, okay. So, we've got a nice little cluster of Vikings along here. One tiny Viking down over in this direction. But even if we were to put all of our strength together, we don't have as much as the King of Sweden. So, yeah. For the time being, we can't just, you know, do a very quick in and out and whatnot. We're not going to be able to, uh, you know, just grab the throne or anything. We need to build up our strength first. Okay, another advantage I've got, of course, is... Because I am part of Sweden, don't necessarily want to be, but I am, no one can declare war on me. Not on me directly. Anyone who wants to attack me has to attack Sweden. So that gives me a bit of security, except it kind of doesn't, because if we just go over to the, um, the government map, actually, I am literally on the edge of the world in terms of feudalism. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of tribes very close by, and tribes obviously can get a bit, uh, fighty. They're allowed to raid, so raiders coming in could be a problem. But on the other other hand, my religion comes with something very very nice indeed, which is, uh, yes, my religion makes me a warmonger. So I'm kind of supposed to be going to war, and as a result of that, I get all sorts of options uh, that my stupid Catholic feudal friends over here don't have access to. I have access to the tribal style Causus Belli, so I'm allowed to go and conquer any individual county of my choosing. I can go to war very, very easily. And, even better than that, I'm allowed to raid. Alright, I'm feudal, but I can still raid. So, I've got some good advantages going on here. I mean, when I say I can go raid, I've got like, you know, 260 guys working for me. And everyone nearby has... A lot more than that, like so much more than that. So we can't go raid yet, but there might be some good opportunities to get some money in a hurry. Then we can convert money into, you know, more buildings in our castle. Once we get some more levies going on, we'll be in good darn shape. Plus, of course, nobody says I have to go and, you know, ransack Finland or anything. There might be, you know, better targets closer to home. Like, for example, I can't help but notice, yeah, down over here, there's a tiny, tiny republic. So, republics are really nice in terms of, you know, say, looting. They're worth a lot of flipping loot. 31 gold just sitting there waiting to be looted. Okay, Olaf, you might get the hat back sooner than we were expecting. So, yes, we might want to go down there and just start ransacking our own territory for money, taking the hands out of, you know, the stupid Catholic republics, bringing it back up here to Mighty Mighty Owland. Now that, that could be useful. But before we do that, let's make sure we know who we are and what we've got here. We need to understand everything about our person before we kick off properly. So, I'm already married, she's 27, she's produced two children... And, okay, I can see how I'd get on with her. She also seems to be, you know, pretty nice, all things considered. We've got some lovely generosity there. Content. Humble. Okay, unlikely to be planning to murder me. Thumbs up. Together with two children. Baby Stenar, who's too young to really know anything about so far. But his brother? Right, Adelvard. You're already ten years old, so... 
Okay, you're, ah, chased. Well, that's no good at all, dear oh flipping dear. Charming, though. So, okay, what direction does that logically lead you in? So, diplomacy or intrigue? Looks to me like, yeah, your base stat for diplomacy is a little bit on the, uh, the better side. You've got more going on in that direction. Though, we need to make sure we've got someone who can actually, you know, uh, properly educate you. So, who have we got that might be... Who the flip are you? Hang on, hang on. I don't know who Malin is, but I'm kind of interested because she's got all the flipping stuff in the world going on here. Right, Malin's a berserker. Well, that's just flipping lovely. She's also scarred. She's reclusive. She's irritable. She's reckless. She's an unyielding defender. I read that as unyielding disaster the first time. That would have been even better. She's also vengeful and stubborn and ambitious. I mean... Are we 100% sure we want her to be in this territory? Oh, bloody hell, she's the spy master! Oh, this is... Oh, um... I mean... She's almost certainly the most qualified person for the job, but she does have 19 intrigue and, like, hates me. And also she's... Oh, she's Catholic. And thus thinks I'm evil. Okay, so Malin the Inevitable Johnson... We might not necessarily want her to be around. Like, I'm not convinced she's going to be good for my health in the long term. Okay, a lot of people, as it turns out, sort of uh, hate me. Because, yeah, short reign must be uh, early on in my reign. And my religion is uh, unreformed. Which is, unfortunately, yes, a base minus 20. So that's, that's a concern. So at some point, if I want to stick with this faith at all, we're going to have to reform it. Or, we just need to accept minus 20 from literally everybody. Okay, well here's one thing we can do to help, which is, uh, my wife now has a permanent spot on the council. No more advisors, advisors are gone. Instead, you got your five normal slots, and then uh, your wife, who always gets to be on the council. So, uh, we get to choose uh, what she does. General assistance, or help me out with court politics. Well, that's what she's good at, and a plus five, uh, her doing that... That's going to boost my diplomacy by a good, solid amount. And as a result of that, yes, general opinion is going to be a lot higher. Straight away, you can see there is a bit of a change there. So, yeah, kind of changing that round makes a big difference to uh, how much people actually uh, like or dislike me. By the way, you can now change everybody's jobs on the council as regularly as you want, which is... Very good. It was always kind of annoying when, you know, say, you sent your priests to do something in Crusader Kings 2, and then they sort of, by pure chance, did it the next month, and then they were just stuck standing there doing nothing for, like, a year or whatever it was. No more. Now you can just change job at any time of your choosing. The problem is, however, yes, I'm surrounded by absolute flipping incompetence. So, uh, there's not many people in my court, like 12 of them, and uh, some of them are going to be, yes, my own children. Uh, so, okay, we don't exactly have much of a choice. We've got ourselves, yes, Malin, the inevitable Johnson, she's going to kill me, isn't she? Like, the moment anyone plans to kill me, she will be joining that plot. So, uh, even though she's got no reason to start her own plot, she will 100% be an agent for any foreign plot. So I feel like she's got to go at some point. I mean, you can't have a spy master that hates you. The problem is everybody hates me. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay. Ulf, however, my chancellor and also one of my champions, which is a knight if you are pagan as I am, he hates me, you know, less. And he is actually part of the same religion as me. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to swap you two round right now. Even though I appreciate that's going to lead to, you know, problems. Oh, wait, they won't swap because I assume she's only allowed to have the role of spy master. I'm guessing she can't be chancellor because you're... Yeah, she can't be chancellor. Right, I was wondering why they weren't swapping. Okay, so in that case, you're just getting fired, actually. Irritatingly, I do actually have a very good champion standing by who can actually make a really good steward, but... Yeah, this guy is literally my only vassal, so I should probably keep him... Uh... Keep him sweet, and this is the only thing he's even remotely competent at. Still, while I've got him on collect taxes, 
It is saying there is no negative possible side effects, so we'll leave you where you are for the time being, unfortunately. Okay, and as Spymaster is open to women, Inga, who is apparently just a courtier of mine, you would do a competent enough job, so you just get on with that, and yes, just disrupt some schemes, that's absolutely fine, just keep me safe, please. And we've got literally no one who's better than six for Marshall. Okay, so yes, we've not exactly got um, huge amounts of talent in the world. Now, in Crusader Kings 2 at this point, we'd probably just invite some new people to court. Yeah, that's, um, that's harder than it used to be. So here we go, we've got someone flipping perfect right here. So Birga, he is of my religion, he is of my culture, he has got a good martial skill. He right now has no job, he's lowborn, he's wandering, but if I try and actually um, invite him to court, he will definitely not accept, even though he's plus 24, not even close. People don't just accept invitations anymore, you've got to get like hooks on them or something like that, so yeah, it's much more difficult to get people to court. Instead, you're at the mercy of the guests who happen to show up. So right now, we've got Linda, who's just sort of uh, visiting at the moment, who has got, it must be said, a nice... It's not really a necklace, is it? But I like to think of it as a necklace. It's like a big power necklace right there. Now, she's got good diplomacy, but unfortunately, yes, gender law would prevent her from being the chancellor, which is a bit of a shame. So drop her a bit of money, she'd stay permanently, but yeah, I don't really have a need for her just this second. The problem with having an incompetent chancellor, however, is, uh, yeah... Ideally, I'd like domestic affairs up, because then we can get my vassals liking me a little bit more. But, uh, this exact moment in time, that's... that's gonna be tricky. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is fine. I've got a plan. My new spymaster, Inga. She's actually got herself 13 diplomacy and a pretty darn decent education in exactly that focus. My son's already on diplomacy education, so it's time to get him... Yes, here we go. No, not me. Not me. Definitely not me. Bad call. Inga, my spy master, I am offering you this incredibly prestigious position. And that's going to get up to plus 25. So, uh, I know it seems like a bad idea, entrusting my son and heir to a spy master who doesn't like me, but she's going to like me as a result of me giving her the heir, hopefully. So yeah, in five months, she's going to absolutely love me. And when I say love me, not actively hate me, which I'll flipping take for the time being. And while I could just move Ulf over to domestic affairs anyway, yeah, because he's incompetent, there's a very real risk that he'll actually make the situation worse. He might lower a vassal opinion if I tell him to work on domestic affairs. So given there are all negative side effects and no positives, yeah, I'd probably rather he just didn't even try. Next up, we're going to need some friends just in case trouble rocks up. So yeah, these days, any marriage, even if it's just a betrothal, is immediately an effective alliance. So uh, I need to make friends uh, with somebody nearby in particular. Yeah, who are the most powerful of uh, the counts around here? Because I wouldn't mind being allied uh, to you guys. Oh, well, this is just flipping meant to be. This guy over here in Housingland, he's actually got himself another 300 men, which is uh, spectacular, to be perfectly honest. But, yeah, the problem is, uh, it's going to be difficult to marry outside of my religion for the time being. And when I say difficult, yes, uh, just trying to put together a marriage alliance with one of the uh, Catholic vassals over to the West, that's not going to fly, because... Uh, I might be able to intermarry with some of the pagans over here. That would be okay, because we're both like, you know, pagan and part of the same broad family. But Catholicism, no. The Christian family doesn't want to go mingling with us. Yeah, the most powerful Norse lad going on is Count Tote down over here, who's actually got almost 800 men, but he's just not having it. He doesn't like me enough. I cannot get any form of... Uh, alliance going on there so uh, unfortunately it's gonna be housing land by default i will hold on to my heir for the time being though just my two-year-old son so uh, okay these two babies uh, shall now be married beautiful oh i've just realized something very exciting by the way which is i'm allowed concubines according to my religion okay well this this makes things much easier right 
Inga, my spy master. Congratulations, you're now going to be my concubine straight up to plus 24. Okay, good. Good, good, good. This is, uh, this is looking positive right there. Now, probably not the inevitable Johnson, okay? The inevitable Johnson don't really want to have her as a concubine. Feels like a bad idea, to be honest. Meanwhile, we've got... Hang on, you've got... Okay, maybe not actually. That that strikes me as no. Linda, however, honestly, you'll do for the time being. You're pretty solid. Go on then. I think it's actually just better that Malin the Inevitable Johnson just goes, actually. Oh, that's going to cost me prestige. Okay, just, just off you pop. I feel like you'll be happier, like, not here. Okay, next up, lifestyle. So, yes, basically, when you take over a character who's already an adult, they're already going to have been gathering some perks and experience over time. So, it's always going to match up with your education, too. So, because I had a martial education, yeah, I picked up a few strategist perks already. That's, that's actually pretty good, all things considered. So, straight away, I've got the ability to declare war at half price. Not bad. Force march. So, yes, I can move around nice and fast, too. Naval speed up and also siege weapon effectiveness. Don't have any siege weapons, but, you know, good to plan for the future. Living off the land is actually... Uh, that's actually very good for me. So I can raid faster. Well, 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 well. You know what? You might get that helmet back sooner rather than later. However, I feel like for the time being, yes, the problem is uh, nobody likes me. And also we could do with maybe some more children, just help out with more alliances. So, uh, family focus is certainly tempting. Technically I could go over to temptation, but yeah, I'm not very good at intrigues. So that doesn't feel like that's really uh, worth it. Alright, I've actually got some pretty good diplomacy. So, uh, okay, we need to do the one-two punch here. Alright, velvet glove on one hand, shaking hands and making friends, spiked knuckles on the other, punching possibly the same person in the face at the same time. So yeah, I'm going to go for family focus for the time being, because uh, right now, just I've got a minus 20 with like everybody, because my religion is not in a good shape right now, yeah, potentially befriend might not be the worst thing in the world, that could be worth thinking about. Don't really need to worry about, say, like, you know, special new Kalsus Belli, because I've kind of got access to the tribal ones, which is uh, pretty good. That's pretty good. So, uh, we'll start here for the time being anyway, see how that works out. Ah, yes, and one very important thing here, which is uh, Sweden's got a bit of a fun thing going on, which is, uh, yes, Sweden gets inherited according to Scandinavian elective. So as a result of that, yes, everybody above a baron gets to have a say. And that's interesting. The amount you get to actually contribute depends on a domain development, like um, tech level, and capital popular opinion. Intriguing. So, okay, honestly, the person I'm going to be voting for is uh, my liege. I'm not sure whether that makes him like me more, but like, you know, it might do. I'm just going to toss a little bit of a vote in his direction. No one else is going to, because none of the Catholics are going to be voting for him. But you know what? I like you, my friends. Ah, but because it's democracy, yeah, I could use hooks to force people to vote as I wanted to. Now, okay, I'm going to have nowhere near enough hooks or anything to make that happen for the time being. But, when the time is right, we might be able to slightly, you know, tweak democracy in my favour. I mean, right now, Prince Eric III is second in line. Though that's not actually second in line. That doesn't mean if this guy dies, it would be him. Everyone would just, you know, change their votes. But, okay, it's not a disaster, at least. Keep an eye on that. Okay, quickly appoint my wife as court physician. Because, you know, she's pretty clever, all things considered. And we can't actually afford, like, you know, proper doctors or anything. So, okay, I think we've got all the basics in play and ready to go. That means what we need now is money. We desperately need money, because until we've got money, we can't really boost up our levies. We can't build uh, men-at-arms. We're going to need money to actually set up any of them. Quite a lot of money, in fact. By the way, I get Huskars, which are like armoured footmen, but like better. Like, so much better. They're really damn good. Screening, 29. Toughness, 26. 
damage 44. Compared to normal armoured footmen, they are just head and shoulders above. Huskars are pretty bloody spectacular. Very expensive, by the way. I'm not going to be having them for bloody ages. But, you know, it's nice to know they're an option. Instead, yes indeed, this little republic down here. We're not going to war with you. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that. This isn't a war. I'm just having that lovely 30 gold. Because I can't help but notice that's like as much as I would earn in uh, a year and a half or two years or something. So, yes, we're going to be, um, we're going to be having that. Oh, go on. You can have a helmet back, I suppose. Actually, you know what? That's lovely. Not a proper hat. Just like a little bit of like, you know, a chainmail scarf or something. You can have a chainmail scarf. Now, slight issue, these days navies aren't actually a thing. So, as a result of that, you just pay money to travel over the ocean. And uh, I don't know whether we've got enough money for that. So just give my troops a moment to get together. There, we flip and go. And yes, we've got ourselves uh, straight right here. Though I can cross those without penalty, which is very, very nice indeed. So, uh, if I just want to get out onto the water over here... That's going to cost me... How much? Because it's going to cost me something. Also, ooh. Apparently, I'm leading these guys directly. Yes, commander's not actually, like, um, a job you set anymore. Literally, anybody who's qualified can be a commander. So, uh, on this occasion, I'm going myself. With my lovely new chainmail scarf. Well, this is spectacular. Okay, out onto the ocean we go. We've got that alliance I wanted. So there's another 300 odd men coming in if somebody attacks me. Though, hopefully, we won't need to worry about that. And actually, if Finland comes and attacks me, he won't come and help. Because technically, we won't be at war. So that's absolutely fine. And also, there we go. We're now out on the sea. Am I losing money right now? Hang on. What am I, uh, what am I spending? Yep, so there we go. We are indeed embarking. So embarking costs a certain sum of gold for every... Ah, for every 100 men, one gold is paid. That's not actually how you spell paid, but don't worry, I'm sure they'll fix that in time. So, okay, not that expensive, really. If it was like a three or four gold up front and then that's it, that's not so bad at all. So now we're raiding, we're going to go straight over to here. And we're going to raid this capital. Because there's honestly not much he can really do to stop me. And I don't think I'm going to be declaring war on the King of Scotland. Or like hostility or anything. Hopefully not anyway. Meanwhile my liege is going up to limited crown authority. So yeah he's paid some prestige. In order to have the ability to revoke titles. Retract vassals. And yeah force me to pay a little bit more in men and money. But... Hopefully he shouldn't be planning to, like, you know, revoke anything or anything. If need be, I can actually have a chat with him about our feudal contract. Because, yes, now you've got an actual contract between you and your liege and yourself and any vassals above baron count below you. So if I want to, I can say, look, you are not allowed to revoke my title under any circumstances. But, fair play, I've got to give him something in return. So I can give him uh, an extra 0.1 a turn, though then again... Hang on. I want him to have more troops. I really want him to have more troops because I want him to be as powerful as possible. Then again, hang on. Am I actually sacrificing my men for him to have more men? You know what? Just in case, I'd probably rather give him an extra 0.1. He's unlikely to try and revoke, but just in case, then again... I could have my own council rights guaranteed. That's... That's of interest. Yeah, you can only change uh, three things. So, uh, guaranteeing myself a place on his council. That's... Who's on his council right now? Because I'm guessing I'm... No, I am! I'm his marshal! Okay, that's nice. Didn't even realise. And here's something else I didn't realise. As long as I'm his marshal, I'm getting a bonus to levy, bonus to army maintenance, and... I get more martial lifestyle experience. So, okay, completely ignore the video I put out the other day, which was supposed to be the ultimate guide on lifestyle. Because, you know, obviously it's Crusader King, so we're going to keep finding new stuff for the rest of time. But yes, you can get yourself a bonus 10% on top of your education for having an appropriate position on your Leisure's Council. And on top of that, some people did tell me, yes, the, um, the intelligence perks, like uh, Sharp, Intelligent, and Genius, they also get you another 5 or 10% each. 
So, yes, if you had a level 4 education, and you were also the right position on a liege council, and you were a genius, then all those things together, you should get yourself, like, 70% more experience than you'd get normally. So, that's slightly ridiculous, and I love it. Also, I'm jealous of his council. It's so much better than mine. Right, so, okay, that's fine. Soon, soon we will have money, and now we are officially... Okay, who's creating a faction against this guy? Do not plot against this guy. We need... It's the guy I'm allied with. Why are you doing that? Oh, it's nothing dramatic. He just wants a lower crown authority. So therefore, yes, there's no risk of revoking or anything, which is uh, fair enough, I suppose, but I'm not getting involved. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. This is a slightly embarrassing start for, um, for Count Olaf. Because it turns out you can't raid your own territory. You're only allowed to raid... Uh, foreign territory. So as a result of that, we all put on our spiky viking helmets that totally weren't actually a thing, that's complete nonsense, it's ahistorical, it didn't happen, um, and came down here to this republic, and now we're just sort of standing around, not sure what to do, and this is probably very embarrassing for our religion. This here, this is why you don't get a hat! Right, so we need to find somewhere to raid that's like, small, and vulnerable, but specifically not Swedish. Nope, every tiny nearby territory actually has a slightly more men than we do. So if we went to go and raid them, they could just raise up their own forces and probably kick our ass. Okay, let's, let's just go home quickly and quietly and pretend this didn't happen. Okay, we didn't technically raid anybody. If anyone asks, we weren't here to raid, we were here on holiday. Okay, we just came down to Gotland for a nice holiday. Okay, the soldiers break down, so what we need really is... Okay, we need somebody to go to war. We need somebody else to, like, go to war with each other, leaving them extremely vulnerable. That's what we need. Then we can go in and, like, you know, pick the corpses of the dead for loot. Oh, flipping plot twist over here. So, the king, who's 21 years old, and I was saying, oh, well, you know, he's going to be around for ages. We don't need to worry about the succession. So, it turns out, um, he's got cancer, critical penalty, and he just received a terrible treatment. So, the doctor just came in, tossed in a beehive, and then locked the door. So, okay, we might be not with this guy for very long at all. Meaning right now, okay... This guy doesn't actually seem to hate me, which is... Uh, oh, we're both calm. Okay, me and this guy, we can get on better. This is good news. Plus, he'll have less troops. Okay, this is of interest. Also, Malaysia's... Oh, bloody hell. Right, Malaysia's straight in prison. On what crime? Out of interest. So, possibly the crime of not being the right religion, who bloody knows. So, you've been tossed in... Okay, house arrest. House arrest isn't so bad. It means he's not gaining experience, but it does mean he's not, like, you know, ill. Then again, can you just execute this guy? Because, like, you know, he's the wrong religion officially. So, okay, yes, this is... <laughs> welcome to... Welcome to the fate of uh, the Norse religion. This is, uh... This is not going, uh desperately, desperately well here. I mean, the guy who's just tossed you in prison is wrathful and stubborn. So, it's not a great sign, to be honest. So, if he wants to just drop dead, that'd be really appreciated. Oh, particular problem. Um, the Duchy of Upland, the next person in line to get it is the King of Sweden himself. So, if he takes the duchy, then all of a sudden he's got the right to start. Oh, that's not good. Right, is your wife pregnant? By any chance, she's not pregnant. Okay, but you're under house arrest, right? So that doesn't affect your fertility in the slightest. You're still in the same place as your wife. In fact, if anything, you're now basically bound to spend more time with her because you're locked in with her. Welcome to our world, by the way. You're now just stuck inside for the foreseeable future. Look, just have a date night with the wife. You need to get a son out as soon as possible, please. Otherwise, Catholicism is just going to have the Duchy of Upland. Okay, he's been let go. I don't know what he was imprisoned for. Have you been, like, um, tortured or anything? How are you? Are you okay? Doesn't seem to have been tortured. I think that was just a power move. Oh, I think I see what you did. I'm not sure how, but 
this guy is no longer eligible. I think a deal was done. He was thrown in prison and released in return for standing down in the election. So that's a shame. Well, may as well toss my vote behind, you know, the person who's already uh, winning in that case, I suppose. Okay, let's take a moment to figure out what's going on diplomatically in Europe here, because uh, yeah, now that a marriage is instantly an alliance, there's a lot more alliances than there used to be. So right now we have got ourselves, uh, yeah, naturally we've got Sweden and Denmark together, but France is also involved uh, in that. England right now, of course, is uh, taking part in the invasion of 1066, and uh, who's actually going to win that one first? Okay, so you're losing both, but it looks like William is slightly ahead. Though, you're losing both of them. So, okay, keep an eye on who actually wins that. Because, of course, yes, one of the key things that ended the Viking Age was Harold Hardrada failed to take back the uh, the throne of England. Some people don't know this, by the way. Like, there was a period during the 10th century when the North Sea Empire existed when a single ruler held England, Norway, and Denmark. And historians today generally recognise that that was the second most powerful empire in Europe at the time. Only the Holy Roman Empire had more power. So this was a big deal. Harald Hardrada could very easily have taken over England. It had been taken over by Scandinavians like several times by force in the last century. So this was absolutely a thing that could have happened and it would have been 100% legit. And honestly, kind of wanted to happen on this occasion. Alright, Harold Hardrada taking England, that there would be a good omen for how our Viking run's gonna go, I'd say. Holy Roman Empire, meanwhile, is allied to uh, Ruthenia over here. Anyone else doing- oh, blimey, Hungary's- Hungary, are you okay? What's wrong? Okay, bit of a major revolt going on in Hungary. Sure, it's not an issue. Byzantines aren't doing anything for the time being. Croatia's decided to be friends with- okay, Croatia decided to be friends with Hungary. Poland is, uh, Poland's just chilling out, doing nothing for the time being. That's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. So, uh, Norway is, uh, Norway's allied with, hang on, who the flip are you allied with? Ah, of course, the Isles over here and uh, the Northern Isles uh, over in this direction. So, nothing too dramatic. Also, while I was just looking around, I can't help but notice there's, there is actually territory over here that's relatively unguarded. There's, there's territory over here. In Ireland, that's... It's got, like, nobody defending it. Okay. This is interesting. Now, unfortunately, they're too far away. I can't actually interact with them. So I can't just do one of my stupid county-seizing wars to just go and take Desmond. But... I could go and sack it. I mean, that's... That's a thing. I mean, what's even better is it's relatively developed. There's... There's a church, there's a town, there's an actual castle here, there's... There's money to be made. I mean, it's not like my army's doing anything back home, to be honest. It's just like, you know, chilling out over here. So, okay, we might have found something here. Oh, who the flip are you guys? Okay, whoever the flip you are, I don't really want anything to do with you. Because I can't defend myself. I've got literally the smallest army of everybody in this part of the world. So, there's nothing I could do... If I get myself raided, the best option is, if I'm raided, I may as well go and be raiding somebody else at the same time. Okay, activate raiding, take two. This time, it's going to work. I mean, I'll be honest, we're going a long way in order to do this, but like, you know, that's sort of the whole point. We're Vikings, we're supposed to be going a long way to do this, and once we've embarked, we should start making some fast progress, because, don't forget... I started off with, uh, hang on, what was it? Here we go, engineered for destruction, naval speed up, and once we get there, raiding happens 25% faster as well. So, okay, we are actually well set up for this nonsense. Like, oh, look at that. Look the flip at that. We're just flipping, flying once we're on the sea. Oh, we're, we're going. We're going all the way to flipping Ireland, all right? And we're going to come back with a lot of flipping gold. And because my army's so small, we're actually... We're still gaining money even though I'm raiding. Can we say hello to uh, William while we're passing by, by the way? Tragically, no. You better not be going to raid where I'm planning to raid, all right? Because that's my raiding spot. Now, technically, we are losing supplies right now. Uh, quite a few supplies, actually. 
but we should be okay once we've taken some of this. I'm sure it'll be okay. Oh my goodness, that's... Oh, who's who's attacking? Hang on, hang on. There's, there's a small war going on back home. Sorry, don't have any troops to help out. Who's attacking home? Ah, that Liberty War's kicking off. So, yes, all you want to do is have the, um, the Crown Authority lowered. Honestly, I'm ambivalent. If you want to do it, that's fine. Because that means, yes, he's basically got less rights over me. So that's A-OK. -okay. Now, we are technically struggling a bit right now. Tiny bit of attrition. Only the tiniest bit. Like, we should still make a good profit. And I can just apparently sack this place in, like, a month. That gets me 24 gold. That's a lot. That's a lot of flipping gold uh, right there. So we're just, uh, yep, bumbling around, uh, doing a bit of raiding. This is, oh, this is spectacular. This is actually spectacular. Right, so Ireland is our piggy bank. Got it. Right, in we go. We've got almost as much gold as I can physically carry at this point. Okay, uh, but there is, uh, there is more, isn't there? Yeah, we've looted you. We'd like to loot, like... Who's the easiest thing to loot? There's a church over there. There's a town over here. Once we loot this town, that's that's it. At that point, we've actually got all the gold I can carry. We are going to come home with a giant pile of booty. Is that the right term? I know that's for pirates. But, like, does that also apply to, like, you know, raiders and vikings and stuff? Did they have booty? Oh, hang on. Are you planning to come and, like, take us on? any chance. Uh, okay, there might be. So, okay, we should we should go. That's that's all the gold. We're going now. Goodbye. I don't know whether you're planning to, like, come and help or something, but just in case you are, I'm gonna take all of this gold. Couldn't even carry all of it. Sorry about that. Um, we'll be off now, so we just need to take that home, because until it gets home, I don't think we've officially got it. So it's time for us to get the flip out of Dodge fast as you're flipping, like, any... Anytime you're ready. Are you actually coming in, or are you attacking... Is there just a different war going on? Are you being attacked right now? Oh yeah, he's just being attacked. This has nothing to do with me. So I've just basically, yes, I'm cleared out his... Oh, I've cleared out the garrison. I'd say I'm sorry, but to be honest, it would feel a bit like, you know, inauthentic, given I've literally just come and stolen all your stuff. Yep, so those two are just fighting. I can't even see it anymore. Right, keep an eye on what's going on with... Oh, okay, right. So Williams won, but he hasn't actually... Yes, he's inherited this war. So, all that needs to happen now, ideally, is... Actually, who else is getting involved? Okay, you don't have... Wait, you've got one friend. Is your friend not getting involved? Right, Brittany's just, like, not getting involved. Meanwhile, the Isles are. So, yes, William's won, but he's inherited an already being lost war against Harold Hardrada. So, you've got... Wow, you've got a lot of flipping troops. That's a lot of troops. Then again, some of them are just, like, special. Okay, how much do, like, you have, my friend? Nowhere near as much. So, okay, probably not gonna work out for you. Just keep an eye out. Oh, there's a lot of troops. Right, I think William's got that one. So, yep, there's, there's the end of the Viking Age. Right there, it's happening. And, hang on, what have we got here? So, attentive care for the next five years. Wow! My wife's just... Oh, that's really lovely. That's lovely that my wife's doing that. So, my wife's just looking after me. And that happened despite her poor... Martial skill. Okay, so... Because she's bad at soldiering, it was unlikely she'd be able to... Is she on the boat with me, by the way? Did she come to take care of me? Oh, that's really lovely. This has just become a really wholesome Viking raid. And it looks like the Liberty Faction is actually going to, uh going to win. So, okay, how many people are actually, like, in that faction in the end? Oh, two people. Yeah, so you're, you're outnumbered because you actually have very few troops. And now we just get everybody ashore and, uh, hello there, Ulf increased, aha, because Ulf is my chancellor and my wife has been set to do diplomacy focus in her council job, she's actually improving the diplomacy of everyone else on the council. Very, very nice indeed. And, uh, 30 gold, 30 prestige. Now this, this is good. What's the cheapest, uh, no, not mercenaries. Oh, we definitely can't afford mercenaries. Flip no. Uh, what's the cheapest man at arms? It is, uh, well, it's in range now. And we can actually start bowmen being produced. So, okay, the cheapest is light footmen. 
And those are good against heavy infantry. But honestly, nobody's going to be putting heavy footmen out into the world. Okay, 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 okay. We need to plan this. Who is my target? Who do I think I might be able to, like, start picking off at some point? I don't know where the hell you're getting your money from up there in Helgum, but you've already managed to get bloody three units of men-at-arms out, which is quite frankly unfair. Yes, a lot of people seem to be... Let's just check if everyone's building men-at-arms, and uh, it's light footmen. Loads of people are just building light footmen because they're cheap, and money's a bit hard to come by. So therefore, if I was to train, you know archers that are effective against light footmen. Okay, I'd say we're onto a good thing here. On top of that, yes, bowmen are highly effective in hills, forests. Okay, this is precisely what's around this part of the world. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go over to the, what is it, the terrain map, the simplified terrain map. So what we've got over here is precisely that. Okay, we've got a lot of, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, uh, what we need to do is get some actual armies into production right now. I'm going to get one bowman straight in. How are they in terms of cost? That's going to cost me 0 0.2 going forward. That is only like 33% more expensive than basic light footmen. So then again, we could have onagers. They're cheap and they help me destroy walls. Go for bowmen for now. So those are now in production. And yes, they're going to be costing 0 0.6 while they're training up. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Probably best you guys just stand still for the time being. Can you guys... Why can't you guys break down? FYI. Can't just spam when there are hostile armies around. Okay, what hostile armies? Because now you've got me worried. These guys aren't hostile, are they? Well, they are, but like... I'm not really getting involved with them, to be honest. Okay, as soon as they naff off to the north, we might be able to... Yep, disband the army. Alright, just get them home. Let's make some money. Wait for the archers to be done trading up. Because then I can bring them with me. And we'll have a much easier time dealing with the situation going forward. Because that's an extra 100 men. And the reason you might want to prioritise men at arms over buildings is... Buildings are going to cost you, like, um, what, like two years? Or something to actually construct. Then the levy's got to fill up, I think. So you're going to get your men-at-arms a lot faster. Okay. I don't know what's going on over here. But despite the massive troop advantage of William the Conqueror. The number of troops appears to be going down. And you're starting to... Oh, flip. Harold, come on and... Okay. My son's getting a good education. Right. Well, this is... This is all going beautifully well. Okay, a bit of a Barney next door involving Finland. So yes, you guys have just taken a bit of a uh, bit of a battering. Though your wife is currently imprisoned by... Right, well this is a bit awkward. So Nyland's won, but Finland still has, yes, the wife of Nyland's king in prison. So this is all very awkward. And yes, as time goes by, short reign is starting to go down. Things are starting to shape up. And I'm pretty sure I also saw... Who's pregnant? I know one of you is pregnant, but I'm going to be honest, you all look... You all look kind of similar. In a way, I've clearly just got a type. So, it was Inga. Lovely. So, ah, you're also educating my... Okay, so, I've just realised that, yes, um, what's happening is uh, I've got a primary wife and uh, Inga, one of my concubines, is now pregnant. Now, her children do enter the line of succession, um... But as a result of that, it would technically work in her unborn child's favour if she was to, you know, somehow engineer an accident involving my son, who she's the guardian of, and also she's my spy master, and also she's a godless ravener. So, okay, um, I'm sure this is fine. She seems to like me. Oh, also the King of Sweden did change. So, okay, right. We've got a new guy here who is, okay, he's calm. He likes a party. He's greedy. He's a little bit into diplomacy. Okay, so me and him have, yes, a much more logical friendship. We get on. This is good. His marshal is not what it once was. This is, uh, this is positive. So me and him, we can be friends. And that also means presumably there's, yes, yet another bloody vote. So, okay, uh, arranged by vote score. So, 
Does this mean that, like, you know, what's his face is? He's not on the docket. I don't know what was done to him, but he's just not on the docket anymore. Possibly the rules of the election were changed. I don't know. Ah, extended family and claimants are candidates. So uh, if he lost his claim, I bet that was what was done. I bet that the condition of his release was uh, you need to sacrifice your claim. That's logically what just happened, which is why he's not eligible anymore. Oh, and the king's wasting no time. New king of Sweden has declared a war. So, uh, okay, he is marching north to expand Swedish territory. Okay, this is good. This means he's not focusing on, you know, dealing with the uh, internal threat, if you will. Ah, here's interesting. There's a massive war going on over in Wales where Gwyneth has apparently just brought in, like, everybody. The Isles, Herefordshire, Oriel over in Ireland. So, okay, as a result of that, these guys are looking very flimsy. Right. Everybody on the boats, we're going back to Ireland. Though I think actually if we move the... Yes, if we move the rally points to here, we can actually save ourselves moving through an entire sea hex, which barely even matters, but screw it, it's nice to feel we're being a bit more efficient. So, okay, we have now got more flipping troops. Raise up our army of... We up to... Oh, 400. Soon the world will be ours. And as we set off, I've just reached enough XP to get myself a lifestyle perk, so... Uh, Okay, need to start at the bottom, work our way up. Plan ahead, because yes, it takes years to get a single perk. So, uh, boost gifts, I don't really have the money for that, to be honest. August is more about prestige, which isn't so important for me, but I could make my children better. Which is not a terrible thing. Having better children, that's good. The befriend scheme, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Then every friend's stress gain is not so important. A friend's scheme power. I wouldn't mind just having the ability to have, yeah, better children, befriend people, and then down a little bit to some other good stuff here. Then again, diplomats got some good stuff. So, fellow vassal, plus 15. Independent ruler, plus 15. Extra alliance, don't need a marriage. That's really nice. And uh, embassies, alliance is plus one diplomacy. That's nice. That is nice. That would be a nice thing to work towards. Ooh, that's tempting. Okay, I'll take Befriend, but we're not sticking around in this tree. I just wanted to grab a Befriend. Because now I've got that, I can actually start doing some, you know, good stuff with the council members who are not so keen on me. Then again, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be replacing you as soon as literally anybody better shows up. And speak of the devil, Linda is in the process of potentially leaving my court. So... As soon as she goes, hopefully, somebody else will rock up and maybe we'll recruit them. Because seriously, we need a better marshal, we need a better chancellor. For the time being, though, it is never going to hurt to, you know, be a friend to this guy. So, 36%. Because, ah, he doesn't see a good opportunity, my rank is lower. My diplomacy is pretty good, Opinion is nice, but chance of success is very low. I'm guessing, yeah, trying to befriend the king is going to be even worse. No, that's... That's 70%. Ah! It's because we've actually got a lot in common. So I've got a good chance of just befriending the king of Sweden. Well, I shan't say no to that. Right, everybody on the boats. Continue getting on the boats. We're still going to Ireland. Oh, and tragically, it looks like, yes, William is... Uh, clawing it back. I was hopeful for a second, but no, it looks like he's gonna be able to have it. The Viking Age is indeed a bit on the oversight. Right, we've arrived here in like no time whatsoever. Raid loot is, yes, there's 20 here, there's 9 here, there's, wow, there's 17 there. Okay, this place is flipping rich. So just get ashore, get looting. We got some lovely, lovely troops ready to go, and their army is battered. On account of all of this. So how is the uh, how's the siege going? Should be going to take two months actually. And uh, okay. We've got a daughter. That's a good thing. Because bear in mind of course now marriage equals alliance. And marriage to someone nice and high up. Does actually generate uh, renown for your dynasty. Daughters are arguably a lot more useful. Than they were in uh, Crusader Kings 2. So uh, yes I can name her after her mother. After an ancestor. There are no ancestors. You don't have any ancestors because she's lowborn. Or, yes, we've got ourselves a good name from the religion, a good name from our culture, 
You know, I quite like Bjorg. It's a fun thing to say. So yeah, she's going to be Bjorg. Very fun one to say that one. So, the raid continues. Absolutely lovely. So yeah, actually, have we got... Oh, hang on. What's our, what's our capacity? Oh, it's up to 40. Now we've got extra troops. Oh, this is why we need the extra troops. We didn't need them for this war. We just need them to carry more stuff off. So actually, if we take all three of these, that's... That's actually kind of perfect. Then again, we barely even need that. Right, so there's... You trying to come home? Are you planning to take me on? Are you planning to take me on? Oh, bad call. Bad flipping call. Advantage me, as it turns out. So, we'll be uh, we'll be having some stuff. Did we capture anyone? We didn't capture anyone. Still, we barely lost anyone. Just a very quick battle right there. So, yeah, four of ours died and 114 of yours did. So, uh... Bad call for you. And I even got myself some lovely, lovely prestige and piety out of that. Shame we didn't capture anyone, by the way. Also, is your head weirdly large? Because I swear your head looks too large for your body there. We can, by the way, get uh, proper, like, you know, kill-death ratios and whatnot. So, oh dear, your levies, as it turned out, uh, kind of sucked versus my bowman, who just straight up destroyed everything. Anyway, we're almost done with the raiding right here. So, uh, there we go. Spectacular. And, oh, there's been... Okay, there's been an important stronghold, uh, which has fallen. That's... Oh, that's me! Oh, sorry, I'm not used to seeing myself looking that angry. Oh, now you're getting into your Viking. Well done. So, apparently everyone's a bit, um, everyone's a bit scared. So, okay, we are properly going and doing a Vike right now. So... Okay, so we've got the run of vast tracts of land and many subjects and shining treasures to choose from. Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 so. We can either capture skilled slaves, in which case, aha, my development progress, like tech level or whatever, starts going up. And their development's going to start going down, unfortunately, and control falls. Or, alternatively, ooh, money prestige, etc. Is that instant money I just get, by the way? Or we've already taken enough? Now, normally, that might be a good thing, but unfortunately, I'm a Viking. So if I say, no, we don't need to raid any further, we've surely taken enough already. That actually costs me piety, because I'm a warmonger, which is beautiful. So, no, bring me bounteous plunder. And once you're done with that, bring me some plunderous bounty, all right? I want both. And very importantly, do I just get this immediately? Is my money about to jump to 57? Oh, it does! And that doesn't even count for the bounty right here. So, okay. Uh, all we need to do is go and take this town, and then we can probably head home, to be honest, to just go and, uh, you know, cash the flipping check. Okay, so we've got a good piggy bank. I was worried for a second, but as it turns out, we've got Ireland right here. Ireland is just, you know, free money central, which is spectacular. So this is... Oh, this is... This is wonderful. Oh, good. My one vassal has managed to slay his daughter, Sophia. Okay, that's... That's interesting. So, what do we need to do? I need to pay blood money and also prestige. But everyone's really grateful about that. Alternatively... Okay, my vassal hates me. He loses a ton of prestige. I don't lose anything. Or... Oh, that's a funny joke, your daughter being dead. Uh, in which case, he doesn't like me, but, like, this guy does. Um, was there, like, a particular reason you killed this random woman in... Okay, well, it says murdered right here. And also she was... Why did you murder a 14-year-old? Why? Why? Well, I'm sorry, you're not getting any money out of me, all right? It took the Irish a long time to earn this money. Yeah, go on, fine. He is going to publicly beg for forgiveness. And I have become friends with the King of Sweden. Oh, yes. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Spectacular. I'll say, though, my son's starting to come along a bit. Chased is unfortunate. Zealous. Oh, my. So, he's flipping ready to go to war, is he? Well, okay. Diligent. Right, Diligent is still amazing, but I am glad to see it's been a bit rebalanced, which is, yes, now it causes more stress gain. So, yeah, he's going to get stressed more easily because he's so diligent. And uh, he is still charming, though that will, of course, evolve into his education perk when the time is right. Right, we've got all the money we need. Time for you guys to come home and bank it. 
Also, that war Sweden started for a tiny bit of territory is not really going that well, because as it turns out, uh, yes, he's brought Lapland in, and Lapland have, like, 2,000 troops. So, okay, well done. Hopefully Denmark comes and flipping bails you out. Right, troops may now stand down, and we're over 100 gold. Right, time to start a bit of investment here, because if we're going to be doing some Viking, we're going to be needing some, you know troops for that. Now, what can we get ourselves here? Military camps. Spectacular. And on top of that, that boosts across the entire realm. Archer damage, skirmisher damage, good flipping stuff. And then again, there is also a trade port. I assume that's available because I'm by the sea. In fact, particularly in islands, like, you know, there's a lot of sea all round every side, in fact. So, okay. Is there any better option than military camps? Because, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. That's gonna take 21 months to construct, and then as tech advances, uh, we can start upgrading that. War in England is still dragging on, but William is slowly but surely dragging it back. Though I can't help but notice... Hang on, what the flip have you just got us dragged into here? Yes, uh, welcome to... Welcome to the world where marriage equals alliance, where world wars across Europe just sort of kick off all the time. So, uh, on this occasion... The French have decided to go for the county of Maine, and uh, that now, you know, you'd think would just be a matter for, you know, say, France and uh, England. But no, 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 no. It also involves, uh, hang on, Sweden, Barcelona, Brittany, and Navarra, because all of them are just involved. Oh, good. My incompetent chancellor is, in fact, so incompetent, he's accidentally given a claim to our one county to the king of cocking Finland. Alright, didn't you listen to the history I was telling you about modern Owlands? They don't want to be ruled by Finland. This is literally the worst thing you could have done. Still on the plus side, actually, if France is attacking England right now, that does at least mean, ooh, England's got like four wars going on simultaneously. If their army ends up being spread too thin, Harold Hardrada might have a chance. And uh, my wife is pregnant. Spectacular. I mean, look at that. There's a battle going on right now. And you are you are losing troops. And uh-oh. Is that just a popular uprising? I think that's just a popular uprising. I'm sure it's fine. Yep, just some peasants. Not an issue. Then again, not an issue. Um, Sweden's down to 1,500 troops. Like, I swear you had more than that a second ago. Before you started two international wars for no reason. Also, um, important update, so Denmark did show up to try and help with the stupid war up north for a single county and was immediately captured by, um, Lapland or, like, this guy. Okay, so he's now, um, he's now in prison. They've now got the King of Denmark in prison. Good, good, well done. Oh, but this is good. A new guest has indeed shown up and, uh, oh my, she's actually pretty bloody good at her job. So, okay, she is vengeful and deceitful, which is a concern. But she likes me. She likes me an awful lot. Okay, um, would you like to stay, by the way? Because you could be my new spy master. How much are you going to... Wow, you're expensive. 25 gold. That's... That's a lot. And looks like Sweden is regrouping up here, and it's Close, actually. It's it's really close. This is to the flipping wire. And I've got a new son of my wife. Absolutely beautiful. And I think we should definitely have a John in play. But, like, with a double N to make it a bit more Scandinavian. So, grow wise and strong, my son. Okay, my wife wants to help out with my council. Because they're useless. And you know what? She's right. They really bloody are. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What are we going to do here? I can basically make her train somebody. But whoever she trains is going to be offended. So, okay. My vassal's not thrilled right now. He's already been insulted by that whole... Well, okay, you're the one who murdered a 14-year-old in a drunkard brawl. So don't come to me about right and wrong. Right, you can give this guy a bit of training. Because he needs to get better. Perfect world. Oh, Halston's dead. Right, we're getting through Kings of Sweden fast on this occasion. He was killed in... Oh. He was killed during a siege. 
Does anybody know what siege? Was he like leading the troops or something? I'm guessing he was. Right, well, okay, he's dead and unfortunately, yes. The downside of having friends is you get stressed when they die. Okay, so we're on to the bloody third king of Sweden and we're less than 10 years into the game. This is slightly ridiculous. So, okay, we're over to King Hakon the Red of Sweden, age 23. Doesn't hate me, seems to be a bit intimidated by me, in fact. Hang on, why are you intimidated by me? I've got literally no dread, and also I'm incredibly trusting and calm. Okay, possibly he's just a bit of a coward. Still, on the plus side, Sweden has started splitting up. Because of course, yes, while the actual kingdom is decided by election, everything else plays by normal succession rules. And normal succession rules is a confederate partition. It's starting to be divided amongst his children. If people die in rapid succession, you will very quickly find, yes, all of your counties have just gone all over the place to 10 million children. So, okay, this is kind of good. Well, kind of anyway. Sweden is divided and weak. And I'm actually part of Sweden, so that's bad. But Sweden is also Catholic, and I'm not, so that's good. So... Not sure whether this is going to work out for me. Oh, and even more embarrassing, he was actually taken out by flipping peasants. Killed in a peasant revolt. Well, that's just humiliating. In fact, yes, we've got all sorts of weird situations popping up here. So, as a result of the rapid series of successions, uh, the actual king of Sweden controls uh, a single county. However, a, yes, two-year-old baby girl... Possibly holds more land than anybody else in all of Sweden. She controls 900 troops. I think that's probably, yeah, pretty much as much as anyone's going to have. The king's got over a thousand, but... Okay, so a baby girl is now basically, yes, one of the most powerful people in Sweden. Good, 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 good. And I can't marry her because, uh, unfortunately, yeah, she's Catholic. She's also spindly, which doesn't seem that bad to me, but whatever. Oh, and flip me, I was right. Okay, so Harold Hardrada is starting to claw it back. Because 100% that score was at zero, and now it's back down to minus 21 for William the Conqueror. Harold Hardrada could still do this. How many troops do you have? He's actually got more. He's actually got more! Okay, my wife's made a friend with what looks like, yes, a prince of England who happens to have every claim in the cocking world. He's got a claim on England, and also Denmark, and Middlesex, Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire. Right, okay, everybody. He's just got a claim on absolutely everything. Now, uh, I mean, there's no harm in keeping him around, to be honest. Yeah, you know what? If he decides to get bored and leave down the line, then that's fine. Alternatively, I could actually, yes, uh, basically snitch to the King of Denmark. Then again, why would I be... Why would I be snitching to the King of Denmark? He is specifically saying, ah, that's because it's the county he wants. Even though his biggest claims are on the Kingdom of England and stuff, yeah, he just wants a specific county. But if I accept him into my court, the King of Denmark might not be impressed. Then again, he's kind of, yes, 53 battered in prison. So, I mean, go on, why not? We need more people in court anyway. Oh, and excellent news here. My son has come of age. Okay, and impress me. It's not spectacular, but it's not terrible. In fact, I'm almost surprised with zealous, diligent, and level 3 education. It's that bad. So, I'm guessing he's just got some poor base stats, unfortunately. Kind of bad luck there. So, 11 and 11 as a starting point. That's okay. You know, actually, hang on. You know why that's okay? By the way, take your helmet off when you're bloody inside. Yes, you're also allowed to dress up people who are, like, close to you in your court. It's great. So, take your hat off, please. Take your bloody hat off. In this house, Adelvard, we earn our helmets, okay? You get the helmet when you've proved yourself. But for the time being, he is actually an adult in my court. And that means, uh, finally, you, my friend, uh, can be... Oh, he's also a champion. 
Well, I guess he would be, yes. Then again, he's... Ah, have you decided to go over to uh, Diplomacy, folks, immediately? I'm guessing you have. Right, okay. So, yes, you, my friend, are going to be our new Chancellor. Meaning now, we can actually move straight over to Domestic Affairs. Because as a result of that, yes, all good side effects. As a result of that, hopefully, all of you guys will slowly come round. Hang on, is that just for vassals? Yes, that's just for vassals. But then again, the odds of just kind of, you know, getting this guy's opinion up would not be the worst thing in the world. Then he's pretty good at producing prestige and fellow vassal opinion up. Again, not spectacular, but it'll do. Now what we really need is... Uh, well, you could also be a marshal. We need a better marshal. We just need a much better marshal. Oh, that reminds me. Hang on. We had someone visiting who actually was going to be... Yes, you're really good at your job, aren't you? Okay, um, you can be recruited for 25. So, there we go. You're now in court, and Inga, sorry about this. We just found someone, like, so much better than you, it's not even funny. Also, Elsa, if you're going to be my spy master, we're going to have to do something about this. You need to look the flipping parts. Yes, much better. That's vaguely spy mastery. Oh, flip me. Um, right, there's... Things are not looking good in Sweden, as it turns out. So, yes, this whole the king keeps dying thing has had a bit of a bad pass-on effect to everybody, including... Okay, Toke, me and you are cool, and uh, is it just... It's everybody. Okay, so... As it turns out, literally everybody who's Norse wants out of this situation. I mean, we could join, right? That's... that's interesting. Except, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is... this is a populist revolt, so there's... there's people. So I'm not allowed to join that type of faction. So... Why are these guys allowed to join that kind of faction, then? I mean, I could create my own independence faction, I suppose, but like... For the time being, I'm kind of okay being, you know, protected by Sweden, but we'll keep an eye on what the bloody hell's gonna happen in seven months. On the plus side, that stupid war finally ended, by the way. Bloody hell, so... Okay, we have got ourselves a brand new person of the correct religion, and brand new pregnancy. Good, 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 everything's under control, this is spectacular. I should check, by the way, what duchy am I, like, supposed to be part of? Okay, I'm supposed to be part of Upland. Which is currently held by a Catholic. Hang on, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we just, can we just back up? Can we, can we roll back for one second here? What the cock happened to, what's his face? Eric the Smitey. Oh, he straight up stole it. Oh, good, 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 good. So Eric the Smitey's just sort of, uh, he's wandering right now. Excellent. That's, that's positive. Would you like to come to my court? No. Would you believe he doesn't want to? So, okay. Um, the King of Sweden now is... I'm reporting directly to the King of Sweden. Yes, I am. So I'm reporting directly to a Catholic. This is... This is good. And he's just got the, um, he's just got the, hang on, we need to, we need to double check this. Does he have the right to, yes, he has the right to revoke. He does have the right to, well, he's got the right to ask to revoke. We need to get rid of that, like, now, actually. That needs to, that needs to go. So I could join the Liberty Faction, or, if I wanted to, hang on, what's our contract say about this? Yeah, I want my title protected. Alright, I want it protected. I'll pay you an extra 0.1 gold for that. Okay, Sweden's just flipping falling apart right now. So, this territory that used to be the capital of Sweden is now in possession of Count Tost, who is 24, who reports into a two-year-old baby over here, who has nothing to do with this territory, who reports into the king, who's now squatting on Upland, which he stole because he basically had no other choice. He had no land. Right, screw it. I'm in the Liberty Faction. I'm I'm now the leader of the Liberty Faction. Good. Good, good, good. Glad I'm the leader of the Liberty Faction. So that's that's fine. No need to, like, you know, rush to do anything there. Wait for a good moment when Sweden's uh, nice and weak. Potentially after whatever the bloody hell the other faction is triggers, because something crazy's going on with this populist uprising. Also, I just realised something. So, Lapland is in fact... Norse. 
religiously. So this is... Okay, this is fascinating. Oh, Flip, he'll take it. He's willing to accept a marriage between Bjorg and his youngest son. He'll just, just go for it. And as a result of that, I get access to an alliance with somebody with... Oh, 2,000 troops. You know what? I think we'll be, uh, we'll be going for that one, actually. That's a nice little thing to have. Oh, flip me, that's one a hell of an alliance. And as for Adelvard, I can't help but notice, yes, there's no great alliances to be had, but to be honest, we're doing pretty bloody well with where we are already. So, uh, how about instead, we have got a rare double positive genetic trait here, including, crucially, yes, huge amounts of fertility, together with being moderately attractive. So, okay, stack those two on top of each other. She's got plus 60% fertility. So, you know what? That's pretty good. We're going to go for that. Let's just befriend her. All right, that's a good starting point for that nonsense. Oh, Lapland's immediately decided to start calling in my help to attack down south. Um, sorry, no, I'm not going to be not going to be showing up actually. So that's going to be a minus ten against him, but he likes me a lot, so that's fine. It was an offensive war, so it doesn't really matter so much if I say no. Fortunately. And here we go. Children can get some extra skill points. That's always nice to have. But I feel like actually the situation is starting to, you know, resolve itself in terms of diplomacy. So it might be time to play to my strengths just a little bit, actually. Here we go. Straight back over to strategy. Let's move over to a war footing. Oh, and good news all round, even though he's already an adult, Adovan did gain from that. So he's up to 18 diplomacy, and the tents are constructed. We have got ourselves... Oh, we've got men. We have got men coming in. That's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be rising up in no time. That levy is going to start filling up. That is absolutely beautiful right there. Oh, this is... This is good. This is good stuff. We're starting to build up an army. Oh, tragic news though. So Inga has passed on. Apparently she died in uh, died in childbirth. So uh, unfortunately I'm going to gain. Wow, a lot of stress because yes, my daughter was still born and Inga herself passed away. So uh, right, that's, that's a bit on the heavy side. Meanwhile, yes, in just one month, whatever the hell this is, is about to fire. Then it disappeared. Whatever it was, it just went away. So that's... that's interesting. Still, the Liberty Faction is... the Liberty Faction is getting larger. So right now, yes, we've got me, we've got my ally. Yeah, basically it's just North Sweden and the Republic at the minute. And uh, we do just, just about actually manage to outnumber him. But I don't really want a war with the King of Sweden just for the sake of making him a lower crown authority. Because... Uh, I've already negotiated a good deal, so that's fine. Not a problem. Wait, what? The king's gone... How long has he been? Was he always... He wasn't one of... Wait, what the... Wait, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the king of Sweden's one of us. I didn't... He wasn't a second ago right. He definitely wasn't when he got elected. Because literally... Okay, he's seen the light. Flipping hallelujah or whatever the equivalent is for Thor. And on that perception minus one bombshell, because I've no bloody clue how long he's been Norse, but like, he is now, so spectacular, I would say that is enough for now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, uh, this is a pretty solid start. I mean, okay, it's, it's a mixed bag, to be honest, which is, we do actually have a king of Sweden who has flipped to the true path. But like, on the other hand, Sweden is sort of, disintegrated into a completely incoherent mess. And God only knows what... Oh, bloody hell this is. Who are you allied to, by the way? Okay, still France. Still France. Good. Good, good, good. So, yes, yeah, Sweden is a mess, but it's a mess that might, just might, work out in our favour. So, okay, sorry. Cancel all of the plans to... Oh, that's what it was! It was the populist uprising. They demanded he convert to their religion. And he didn't have enough men, so he did! Oh, flip, that's what happened! That's why he's got, like, a really negative glowy red piety right now. Because... Oh, flip me! Oh, precious populist uprising! Oh, this is... That's actually brilliant! 
because obviously, historically, sure, large parts of Scandinavia went Christian at the highest level, where the aristocracy and whatever said they were Christian, and like mass baptisms and conversions happened, but Really, archaeological evidence says that the people on the ground continued to worship the old ways or some combination of the new and the old ways for centuries into the future after this point in history. So the fact that the flipping king of Sweden was just forced by popular uprising to readopt the old ways is... Well, I wasn't expecting it. That was literally the one thing I wasn't expecting to happen. So, welcome back to Crusader Kings, where everything's nonsense and you can never bloody predict what's about to happen next. So, well, I know one thing I do need to do next, and that's actually get some territory. Because I can't help but notice, I'm in a better place than I was in terms of troops. But I've still literally only got one county. So, I need to find somewhere that I can, you know take over at some point because yes problems in that regard I've literally only got uh, one county and uh, I've got children that need marriages I need new concubines because one of them just died which was you know very unfortunate in many ways so uh, plenty of exciting stuff yet to come ladies and gentlemen welcome to our first full Crusader Kings 3 series this is uh, oh this is gonna be a good time this has been <laughs> This has been slightly manic right from the get-go. Sweden's just imploded. Maybe next week we can put it back together because this series is, of course, going to be every Monday and Friday going forward. Hopefully you decide to stick around for that. It's going to be a good time. But in the meantime, I've been Johnson. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Crusader Kings 3. Thank you very much and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.